Hi guys, Craig and Annette, I was camping and Luke is here today as well. Well, he's usually here, just sometimes you don't see him. It's no secret that Annette and I like to camp off grid. Um, it's just we enjoy the peace and quiet. Sometimes we go to caravan parks, but if I've got a choice between a caravan park and a beachside or riverside or lakeside site, we're going to take the off grid every time. So that means you've got to be set up for it because there's little luxuries like our coffee machine that we don't like to be without. Um, you know, I know there's instant coffee and there's all sorts of stuff, but sometimes there are luxuries that you just don't want to be without. Uh, then you might have health reasons, you might have a CPAP machine or something like that. So today we're parked in the shade and the solar panels on the roof of the, of the CX3 Pro are giving us 1.3 amps of charge. Um, that's not particularly helpful. So we needed to do something to get ourselves better set up for off-grid camping. So let's have a look at what we've done. You know that you've got, in your CX3 Pro, you've got uh, mains outlet if you're plugged into the mains at a caravan park, and you've also got an inverter outlet here. So that's part of the job done. What we needed to do was we needed to add some additional solar panels. So if we're parked in the shade like we are today, these two panels here and these are not expensive panels. These are just the cheap ones off eBay. They're the soft panel. So they're not really efficient, but they're light. So I don't mind, I don't mind them being inefficient because really all I'm looking for is about 20 amps worth of charge. And I can get 20 amps out of these two panels no problem at all. I can park in the shade and I can chase the sun around. So come around the back of the van. So just from my local automotive shop, I found this fitting here, which is a surface mount Anderson plug. Okay, so I could just make a little hole on the side of the van there. It's all just sheet metal there and I could wire in a plug for plugging in my solar panels. So that looks nice and neat. I can plug my solar panels in there and the way the cap's designed that locks the plug in place. So I've got solar input. Um, what if there's no sun and you're camped for a couple of weeks uh, or if you just need some extra power? It's a hot day today. If Annette wants to run the air conditioning, I'm not going to run the air conditioning off an inverter. It's too inefficient. So we've got our generator. Now we bought this Chromtech uh, a couple of years ago. It's a Chromtech Outback is what it's called. It's a 2400 watt, 2.4 kilowatt. Um, I really wanted a Honda, but this is half the price of the Honda. It's just as quiet as, as the Honda. Um, I think it's probably a little bit louder. On paper, it's the same. Um, Audibly, I think if you're actually sitting beside it, I'd find the Honda a little bit quieter. But for half the price, for something that we don't use that often, because really I don't like running a generator, I only carry it for emergencies, this has been a brilliant uh, generator. We've just been really happy with it. Uh, when it's cold and it hasn't been used for a month, it starts on the second pool. Uh, if we were using it daily, it's starting on the first pool, so no problems at all. Now we can plug that straight in to our inlet here, and this is delivering enough power that we could actually run the air conditioning if we wanted to. So if we've got a super hot day, nobody else around and the, and the generator's not gonna bother anyone, we could run it for air conditioning. Other than that, we have it for emergencies if we really need to charge the batteries. And of course, the other place we can charge from is the Anderson on the drawbar. Now, normally on your CX3 Pro, or on a lot of campers actually, this is connected directly to your batteries on board. Um, it's not the most efficient way of charging, but I'm gonna show you what we did to make this whole system efficient. So what have we got? We've got the ability to charge from our vehicle, from our tow vehicle. We've got the ability to charge from additional solar. We've got the ability to generate 240 volt if we wanted, and also recharge batteries from the generator. So let's come inside and uh, I'll show you how we achieved all that. So just before I show you under the bed, um, the power setup, a couple of other extra power points. 
um, the only power point inside that we had access to was down here on the control panel. Um, in bad weather, we might want to put a little toasted sandwich maker here or um, our coffee machine or something like that. So we wanted some 240 volt outlets here. So I got an electrician to put in two more outlets. Um, he was able to cable them through just from the ones in the kitchen. So it was nice and easy. Um, but you do need to make sure that they're uh, double pole power switches for safety. Uh, one of these is connected to the 240 volt um, LAN power. So when you're plugged into a caravan site. And the other one is cabled through from the inverter uh, outlet. So now we have the choice here on this small bench of 240 volt power from um, a caravan park or 240 volt power from our onboard inverter. And um, yeah, we'll stop there and I'll meet you back over via the bed and we'll show you what we've done under there. So here we are inside. Uh, I've taken the, the bed out again so you can see what we're doing. Um, modifications that we made to the electrical system. We installed a DC-DC charger. Uh, that's a, this one's an Enerdrive charger. Um, we installed a smart shunt. And I'll explain that later. We retained the 240 volt charger that came with the camper. We upgraded the supplied inverter to a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Um, We've installed a heater, but I'm going to do that in another video. Um, that's pretty much what we did electrically. Uh, just down here on the end of the cupboard, you'll see that we installed a remote switch for our inverter, our 240 volt inverter, and we installed a Victron battery monitor. Okay, so why did we do all that? Essentially, because we want to have plenty of battery power and we want it to be efficient. We want to be able to make a cup of coffee off our batteries. So running the coffee machine, that was a requirement. It's just, it's one of our little camping luxuries. So hate on us if you want to, but it's one of our little camping luxuries. So the inverter that came with our camper was a 2000 watt inverter. Our coffee machine is 2000 watt. And so I wanted a little bit more leeway, a little bit more in reserve. So we upgraded to a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Um, that can draw up to 300 amps. The batteries, I've only got two at the moment. I am going to put a third battery in, but the two batteries really only supply, uh, they got 100 watt um, boards in them. So, sorry, 100 amp boards in them. So they'll supply 200 amps. This is capable of drawing 300. So I want to put in a third battery so that I can cater for this, but at the moment I'm not pushing it to its limits. We're only pulling 2000 watts maximum out of it. So we've upgraded that. The DC-DC charger, this is what I've cabled the Anderson plug on the drawbar and the Anderson plug that I put on the back for the solar panels are directly cabled to this. So originally the Anderson plug on the drawbar came into a diode here on the end of the the um, control panel uh, sorry end of the wiring panel and then back through to the battery so what I've done is I've bypassed that diode because it's not needed the DC DC charger takes care of that I identified the cables from the Anderson on the drawbar connected them to directly to the alternator input on the DC DC charger and then I identified the solar panels the cable from the solar panels on the roof that comes down to this little switch here on this end panel the solar on off switch and I bypassed that switch because I've now converted that to my heater switch but I bypassed that switch because it's not needed again and bought the solar panel cables directly into the solar input on my DC DC charger and then wired in the second solar input on the, that I showed you earlier on the guard and wired that into the solar input on the DC-DC charger. The only other connection on the DC-DC charger then is back to your batteries. So this then takes care of all of your 12 volt and it makes it nice and efficient. So it gets maximum charge from the car. So when we're driving, we're getting around about 20 amps charge to the batteries here from the vehicle. When we're plugged into solar, 
Um, as I say, parked in the shade today, I was only getting 1.6 amps, if that, uh, input into our batteries. I've plugged in our extra panels here. They're not really in full sun at the moment. I'm getting 14.5 amps into my batteries at the moment. So I'm happy with that. The next thing we did to make all this manageable is we put in the Victron Smart Shunt. Now, a Smart Shunt is super helpful because what it does is it gives you a device, it gives you a, a, a fuel gauge, if you like, to see what's actually going on with your batteries. Now, on the Victron, I can see how many amps is going in or out of the batteries, how many watts, how many amp hours, uh, what the current voltage is, an estimate of how many hours I've got left in the batteries. Um, it's, it's just a great way to be monitoring batteries and knowing exactly what's going on with your system. The other thing I highly recommend is if you're going to do a inverter upgrade like we did, have a look for an inverter that has a remote because inverters are very inefficient and they use power even when you're not using 240 volt. So if I turn that inverter on, it will be wasting batteries, even if I haven't got something plugged into 240 volt. So what we did, let me just duck outside here, is we installed the remote here so I can turn my inverter on and it's only wasting power when I want it. And here on our Victron energy gauge, I can see what my current voltage is, I can see what percentage my batteries are at, 62.3%. I can see that I've got uh, mi minus 116 amp hour. That's, so that means my batteries are actually charging. Uh, that's how many watts are going into the battery at the moment. And that's how many amps. So at the moment, I've got a fridge running. I've got some power coming in. So all up, I'm, I'm positive four amps. Um, so happy days. Um, come on outside. And waiting for the coffee machine to heat up. All on 12 volt power, we can now enjoy a cup of coffee. So that's our 12 volt power setup. Thanks for watching. We'll be back with more.